how was yesterday? Or if you're catching up, how was day 17's exercise? Were you able to finish in one sitting? Or did the number of photos that you had to go through feel a bit overwhelming? And even with a very simple structure, did you feel like you were rushing through each incredibly dramatic photograph? See, the question I want to ask today is just how much can we take in and digest in one sitting? And what happens in our brains when we consume voraciously like this? Are we rewarding the right things? For instance, if we get really good at processing things quickly, in order to get through to completion, sort of like tasks and to-dos, doesn't that mean that the depth of concentration becomes less and less important? I'm reminded of what our courageous Agi talked about in the live session the other day, about how our brains are creating these grooves with each practiced and ingrained habit. So if we continue to reward completion over concentration, what happens to our Zettelkasten. I, for one, think there ought to be a preciousness to what we bring up to a permanent note, no? Do we really just want shallow thoughts from shallow abstractions and connected through shallow relationships that are brittle and are bound to crumble over time? What else can we expect to happen, though, if, if when we look at our permanent notes and we see glossed over ideas, simple words written in the moment that don't really remind us of anything. And you can justify that with just a sheer number of shallow notes, and you could easily argue breadth over depth. And my only argument would be, what's the one thing you know better than anything else? What is something that no other person in this world can talk about with more certainty than you? It's not your career. It's not your education, it's not your family relationship. It's the complexity that is you. And that's what we're doing. Because, hear me out, if a Zettelkasten is a direct reflection, a direct representation of ourselves, then maybe it's time we respected that, honored that, praised that. What we are doing with both the fleeting and literature notes is mining everything we can out of our minds into the Zettelkasten. We are shoveling away the dirt of our thoughts, seeking the roots of what things mean to us. How else can we explain things in our own words unless we do that work? The literature notes phase is crucially important. Because this is how you trust your Zettelkasten. And you have to trust that it's an honest reflection of your thoughts. You have to trust that this dialogue partner is going to be well-informed and well-versed in everything you add to it. This is the litmus test inherent in the simple structure. It's proving to yourself how well you understand yourself, fleeting notes. And it's proving to yourself how well you understand others. That's the literature notes. I'm sure you've heard it said that if you want to go fast, go alone. Fleeting notes. But if you want to go far, go together. That's the literature notes. Go fast and go together with you and the author. I'll end with this. The slow building of a true reflection of us that a Zettelkasten provides is the absolute definition of compound interest. And every day we have an opportunity to double its worth if we do the work. But it's tempting to want the thousand dollars a day from the instant gratification that comes from shallow work. But I encourage you to see that the pennies that we are working with now inherently double and double with each permanent note if we go deep. And what would take a thousand days can easily be achieved in a month's time. But we're not talking about money. We're talking about something more precious than that. I'll see you in the guided writing exercise.